cord to the clock. Boop, boop. Well, you know, I've been uh, facing the same issue with StreamYard because they give me a 50 gig limit. But the good news is, is that with StreamYard, I can send it out to three different platforms, which also record it. So if I delete the recording off of uh, StreamYard, I have it still on Facebook, still on YouTube, and still on Twitter, assuming I don't get any DMCA um, notices or whatever. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And you have, I love redundancy. Also, I like, uh, uh, you know, patterning through different like architectures. So there's three different architectures right there alone. But um, one thing about the Zoom is, anyway, I don't want to bog it down, but basically I was going to say, you know, it says I'm exceeding all my whatever, but when I go into the Zoom and try to delete meetings, like it doesn't have a delete button. And so I'm just like, well, uh, I need to understand Zoom better. Share your screen. Can you share your screen? Let's take a yeah, look at yeah. it. Yeah, I will. I will do that. Because because you have all these features that I don't have access to because oh, yeah. I don't have a paid version. And one of those things is the beta. You can join the beta program or get in, in, in line for I it. I joined this morning, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. I didn't know if you did saw that or not. That's awesome. Because okay, I, I would love I'd love to be able to lean on you. So uh, if, yeah. you know, if I'm not taking advantage of it, you take advantage of so it. So basically, uh, what, what I did was I come over here. I say, uh, I, go to, I go to here. Not, not this menu structure. You can see my mouse, right? Yep. Okay, I don't go to this menu structure. I go to here. It, I'm in the Zoom app on the, on the Mac, okay? Okay. So basically, uh, I'm here in meetings, and I got this, okay? This is the 23rd of May, but we've been recording long before those. So I've been deleting. I thought I'd just come here, do this, and I have a delete button here. But this, 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 there's no delete button. For whoa, whoa, hold on. That's Telegram, though, you're looking at, right? No, this is up here in the top left on a Mac. We'll show you what you're acting No, no, but, uh, but why does it see right there where... This says Telegram right below help. Uh, looking, 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 help, help. Here's help. Right, a half inch below. What does that word say? Telegram. There is no word Telegram in the circle of my mouse. Okay, then you're doing something display-wise. I'm seeing your Telegram thing. I'm seeing EOS. Oh, you here. know why? Because you're not sharing your screen. You're sharing a window. Probably no, or I'm, I thought I was sharing the whole screen and Zoom is exempting its program from the whole screen share. Maybe I'll stop share. All right. I'm back, right? Yeah. All right. So now try I, I go to more. I go share screen and then it says desktop one uh, versus all those individual programs. Right. So I click desktop one. Boom. And that is my desktop one. What's funny is my Zoom window is active right now. So can you see Zoom US right here? By my yeah, but, okay. but I, I see a big, here, let me screenshot this so you can see. Oh what yeah, I it's see. amazing. So Zoom exempts their own app. Yeah, the they, make it, they make it invisible. That's right. This is what I'm thinking. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're looking at all this uh, EOS translation foundation stuff. Um, so how do I get to the chat? Here. So I'm sending it just through the Zoom chat because basically I can't see what you're trying to show me because I'm looking at your Telegram is what I'm seeing, which is sort of funny because uh, if you didn't know that, you might reveal something you didn't intend to. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a it's a risk, but uh, you know whatever. I mean, well, I mean it's fine. We're we're a team. We're learning together. Exactly. You know? it, it's wild. You know, we did a study on trust, uh, how it distributes across kind of ordinary workflows and i i'm familiar with the uh kind of the threshold in this security vector okay we're talking about this one security vector it is mitigatable using trust but trust is very mysterious to us right now as a species but what fractally is trying to do is <clears throat> crack the code on trust and if you crack the code on trust i don't think the the people have any idea how valuable trust is i don't think that the species has any idea how valuable yeah and, and i don't think it's a very easy metric to define programmatically it has it's to be very, done in a very uh it's a human it's a human thing you know the nuance that's involved in it is complex but it, it can be done saying it's so cool talking about that 
it's amazing to, to, to quickly, easily, casually dialogue on that subject. Well, I think about this a lot because really uh, a lot of people don't realize what I'm doing. And a lot of what I'm doing is, is trying to develop trust by just putting myself out there, being transparent and making mistakes and not caring. And all these kinds of things are, are sort of like there are certain kind of cultural traits that I'm trying to live out, even though I'm not necessarily saying, hey, everybody go out and fail. You know, I'm just saying that, if, you know, it's beautiful listening to you hit the topics, say trust in this case, call it is failing forward progress. Good question. There, there's a way to fail forward. Yes, there is. But if you could fail backwards and repeat too, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, like it's a nice question. I haven't asked it really myself. Is there such a thing as, as failure or uh, going backwards at all? And I would say maybe. Well, I think really what it comes down to it's just more like it's just how fast of a learning process or learning capacity for change does an individual or society have so for me failing backwards versus failing forwards is more like when you do you learn from the lessons and if you don't you repeat them to learn the lesson again and if you don't learn the lesson you keep repeating them so what i see sort of eos is struggling from to a certain degree is that even though the situations change, people are still interacting with it as it's the past because they're holding on to a lot of that energy, you know, a lot of the FUD. So and they're interject there and say, I give validation to this function of cyclic because I assign a quality that I call uh, stability. So what they're doing is creating circles of uh, cycles uh, for stability. Hey, give me recording permissions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, screen sharing permissions are already on for you. Okay, so I should be able to record. Well, I already record. No. You're already recording. Okay, but... you're already recording. Okay, I thought you didn't. I didn't think you were recording. So oh I yeah, you were space. Yeah, yeah. In fact, right after I was mumbling about it, I went boom. Uh, I missed. Yeah. I hit to clear the dialogue so quickly I didn't remember. <laughs> but what I was saying is worth repeating. Sure, sure. Because because. When we talk about failing backwards as an idea of uh, hovering on a, uh, a loiter, uh, a loiter uh, path where we're doing circles uh, in a loiter status, I would say that is a defines stability. This is a stabilizing structure. And <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> now, now people, people point to it, say it's toxic. And I, it's a toxin. And I say, no, 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 no. This is a stabilizing functions. All toxins have a bad name because I give value or credibility to a stabilizing function. So if somebody wants to shoot their foot, repeat, shoot their foot, repeat, shoot their foot, repeat, shoot their foot, repeat, I'll just tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, we got your back, bro. Let us know if we can help. But what I'm not gonna do is point at them and say, you should be jumping out of that pattern. Right. I agree. I agree. Because because the way I look at it is the problem of repeating the past mistakes or going into what I call negative feedback loop. It's first off, nothing you should judge someone for because they're a victim of their own sort of, you know, situation or choosing. But to me, in a lot of ways, it, it, it's uh, it's it's something to where uh to move out of that is like it's like a quantum shift kind of thing that happens yeah it's not like a, i just make gradual change or you know make some efforts or whatever but there's a fundamental changing of the way of thinking and a lot of that has to do with replacing the ideas of what you're previously thinking about with a whole new set of ideas that you're thinking about and sometimes a large part of that is not focusing on the negative that you don't want, but focusing on the positive that you do want. You. And when Thank you see examples of other people doing the positive that you want in a way that's conducive to you, that you couldn't see or think in that way yourself, that's a role model, that's a leader. But the worst thing you can do is not lead, not have an example of a positive way to be and then criticize someone else for the way they are when you're the same way or you know just a different kind of thing. And so for me, it's sort of like, all these things are intertwined. I mean, education, leadership, you know, just like uh, not having non judgmental evaluation and patience and forgiveness. Like there's a there's a scientific side to what we want to do with the metrics, but there's a human side and how this all plays out. And if we don't 
keep it all in balance and give attention to what needs to get attention that the that that cycle of stability is to me it's sort of like a curveball a kind of thing to where it's going to keep going that way till someone recognizes what's this holding pattern and what's what rather than try to use a lot of energy to change it it's a small amount of energy that changes the fundamental system because you introduce new variables or information into the into the uh thought process or the thinking is the way I, I look at it. I love that. Yeah, I love how gentle introducing new subtle thought processes can be amid this really crude cycle of, of, of train wrecks where you're just like, hey, I have an idea. You know, here's Dan Larimer, for example. He's like, I've thought a lot about this, maybe. <laughs> but uh, as an example, but uh, our own example is us meeting and talking about it. It's very low, <laughs> low, low energy. Uh, low, low magnitude energy, very gentle, uh, precise energy, you and I and our words right now, but they're profound. Absolutely. And, you know, I want to contrast this to the, um, was it Helios? I can't even remember. It was Chris Barnes and Douglas Butner um, discussing, Chris, uh, Chris and Douglas uh, talking about Eden and or uh, and, and, and Douglas expressing his interest in being a data structure oriented person and thinking in systems and the problem with there's no measurable definitions to what value is what value creation is and so there was this long dialogue and ultimately I really really appreciated Douglas's uh, perspective and position um, which I agree with but I also felt as though um, what he was sort of elucidating was the failure paths that he wishes to see avoided and how it can be technologically and humanly constructed and designed to avoid those failure paths. Whereas I think that's a great thing. I am the opposite mind of the similar kind of thinking as it's compatible. I'm not looking at the failure paths. I'm looking at what's the best way. What's the way that we haven't even thought about or considered that could be an alternative, creative, hyper-efficient, innovative, novel way. And how do we achieve that with consensus and whatever? And so on the one side, Douglas is talking about dealing with bad actors, dealing with individuals with uh, uh, malevolent, nefarious agendas, or and having a system of metrics of performance of what someone says they're going to do versus what they do, but pair value keys and measuring it and all this stuff, which I'm fine with and I think is great. But here I am wanting to talk about. Well, wait a second here. You know, here we're talking about Eden elections. You know, and I think it's sort of a joke how the EOS community takes it because you have someone like Brock Pierce who shows up who doesn't even plan to run for chief, chief delegate, but then shows up to the meeting and gets elected chief delegate. Well, of course, because he's got rep, he's got name, but it's sort of like, man, you know, in real politics, the way I think, you know, people spend lots of money campaigning and advertising for, they have these well thought out and structured, you know, uh, ideas that are presented well before these, uh, the election date. And I was like, man, if you're trying to reach consensus, can we not start organizing outside of the chief delegate weekly, monthly meetings or whatever into full, can an independent decentralized effort uh, be driven where we actually come up with a whole game plan that we all already in consensus about, make it, give it a name and a brand or something. And so when we're, uh, we're joining Eden and uh, to, for the chief delegate election, we're all like, hey, we're all part of this team. You know, we're on team XYZ. What happens if, we get like 80 to 90% of the active members, all part of that team. <laughs> and now, you know, in the chief delegate meetings, it's like teammate against teammate. But if, if there's a sort of understanding of, hey, we, we already know how to deal with this kind of situation, you know, like it's all pre-thought out. It's, it's the kind of thing to where, I don't know, it's just, just as much as Douglas has his wacky ideas that he keeps harping about. I've got my wacky ideas that I keep harping about, but why am I depending on Helios's live thing on Twitter to create that you know, space to have that conversation? Why is Douglas Butner trying to insert that conversation in the fractally meetings or into whatever? It's because the only place there is to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's sort of like, why can't we just create a space where 
people can pursue their ideas and that dialogue and they don't have to have the uh the, like the concern over building that infrastructure like right now the amount of cataloging and uploading and editing and stuff that i'm doing if people were to start creating content in mass and having this dialogue it would be a tremendous workload but i'm thinking man i'm really soon close to a point where i could figure out how to automate this like i don't know how to implement the code but i could tell you how i'd want it to work you know using all these different uh different um what you call it tools so like for example streaming out to youtube and facebook and twitter facebook has no way that i can look at the page to see the number of views i get twitter shows the number of viewers and YouTube shows the number of views in that exact language. Okay, it's different. In Twitter, you have hearts. In YouTube, you have likes, but you also have thumbs down. And you have people who can subscribe to your YouTube channel, and you have people who can follow you on Twitter. I want a metric that can measure all these different data sets so I know exactly when I do something, how people are interacting with it. Because right now that information is hidden to me because it, we're, it's, it's available to these third-party hosted service providers that we use and it's not fully necessarily revealed or fully to be trusted, you know, in my opinion. I've seen views not match what they should just from my own visitation. And so um, the long story short is uh, I'm having a heck of a fun time trying to keep up with my own uh, mess I'm creating. But I found out there's a guy on Facebook that I got uh, talking to, tech stuff with. And I'm thinking to go Drupal now, because I think Drupal's the direction to, to move away from WordPress to a more, uh, a less, I mean, Drupal, I mean, WordPress is open source. So is Drupal, but I consider it sort of proprietary too. I don't know. If, that makes sense. Whereas a lot of these React sort of full stack framework, I mean, they all have a sort of kind of proprietariness to them and that the, the web framework or the development framework you're using may differ. But when everything ultimately is like, like a lot is just like, I'm thinking everything JavaScript and JSON, because it's sort of like where Nathan James was going with the WASM code being compiled primarily traditionally by C++. And uh, now they're wanting to open that up and have it not be limited just to C++. And it's so funny he says that because from the very beginning of my entrance to this ecosystem, I was wondering the same thing and asking the same question. And I've seen a small change since then, but I didn't really feel as though it was going to be like a, a thrust like he's talking about. Because I'm all into the, uh, I'm, I'm interested in getting more into Python myself just because I want to integrate these data sets with machine learning and scientific studies. Python seems to be the language to go that has all the built-in libraries for that. Oh, and you know, the, uh, the avatar. Oh, yeah. muted. Sorry, bro. The, uh, the avatar. I, I agree. I'm using yeah. But I, I'll just, Python. Yeah. I was like, there's many languages, but uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, it's, this is like a shift around process it's not like already like solved just by shifting to but when nathan james comes out and says we need to break open the c plus plus problem or the c problem uh we we all say you know, yes or no well in this case yes obviously break it up now thank you and then and then it goes through a whole nother cycle of like being able to use streamline and then break up again so it makes sense you know he's getting in there and doing a little housekeeping right out the gate well you know what too is this plugin uh or not plug in the avatar we're using right now is a GitHub repo and you can install a Windows downloadable program to run the avatar just on your desktop computer if you have a fast enough video card. If you have a CUDA enabled video card, so I want to get one. So that means you could use this like on Skype or live broadcasting, not just zoom. Yeah, oh, uh, not on could... FaceTime. Well, and you can use real human people. Like I could look like I could deep fake. Nice. 
not just these simple avatars. Like if okay, you're well, now you're talking. Now you're talking. I love that when the moment that we lose cabin pressure kicks in, where people finally realize what we're really talking about. Right. <laughs> well, and see, for me, it's sort of like it's not that I feel like Python is the way to go. It's just that the things I'm interested in is the path that I want to go down. You know, and that's what I encourage is that people have an ability to explore their whole life in the world around them, including technology in a way. It's a way of self-discovery of like, what's your passion? What interests you? What is the thing that you've always wanted to discover or do or learn about that you never did? Or, you know, like believing that all these things are now available to us because informationally we have access. Well, you know, you came on here right out the gate and said, uh, you know, hey, I'm exploring a, a wild world with no limitations. Oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I've been pretty much staying and doing the same thing all along but it's evolving and changing where i'm at yeah like look at me now i'm an animated character this is awesome for sure and all it really needs is like a second half you know what i mean it's like uh you know like it needs a dialogue -y kind of a function to it so that it can keep like like hugely like stretching its arms and like well i want to start creating avatars for my different educational programs so each each uh identity with a different content type has a different avatar, a different iteration of myself. Well, here you go, man. Here's like a little avatar action for you, by the way. Nice. Thank you. This is uh, just my friend. He runs a Vietnamese store here in town. And he's like, here, man, here, man, here, man. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll make some Vietnamese coffee. I broke out my old Vietnamese uh, coffee. Uh, is that a copper kettle that you're pouring out? Vietnamese coffee uh, brewer. It's, it's nice. very popular. This is very popular. It's basically. Oh, yeah. No, I've had that. I've had that kind of coffee at uh, the v, v Pho, uh, Pho restaurants, Vietnamese yeah. Pho noodle. I love that stuff. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, and he's like, uh, it's hilarious. He hooks me up with this, uh, this stink, stinky jackfruit, like wafer, oh, yeah. wafer shit. And he's like, you'll know whether you're Asian or not after tomorrow morning. And so I'm eating these wafers. They, they stink to high heaven and they're but the thing is, they are, they don't stink as much as they're just, I can't interpret them. And I'm like, wow. So I FaceTimed him this morning and I was like, and he's like, and I was like, wild, bruh. And he's like, yeah, he goes, don't worry, man. Cause he's got these hierarchies of, uh, of uh, like the palate that he's like, you know, I don't want to blow your mind just yet, but you know, Cause, uh, cause uh, he and I are having fun just fucking around. He's an old boy, old boy, like, uh, like a brother, you know, but he's always run the uh, Asian market uh, on across town. And lately I've been just buying, uh, going grocery shop, Asian grocery shopping. And, and so there's like five Asian markets in town. And I, I went by his place yesterday and he stacks me up on like goodness i mean it's goodness you know from from a, we're talking about from a white boy perspective i go from american food i turn oh cool shot cruise hang on bro yeah because uh oh he's coming in i'm gonna go back to avatar oh yeah for sure for sure for sure, for sure. <laughs> take it away bro welcome welcome hey, welcome. hey what's up shock <laughs> oh, miss you man good to see you good to see you nice yeah, avatar. Man. nice avatar thanks oh yeah yeah i'm having fun with it i got a new computer so i could run it ah what is it what, what's what what, is, what what computer do you have it's a used uh optiplex 3040 i got for 150 bucks from my used computer dealer mm. and it has a 120 gig ssd drive and he threw mm -hmm. in a 500 gig hd mm -hmm. and i have it now i added another ssd to run uh pop uh os 2204 so I've got mm. a dual boot in, uh, between mm. Windows 10 and Linux, and I'm mm. having a ball. And now I want to get a, a high enough graphics card to run the the Avatarify Python mm. package mm. on my local computer, which is what Zoom is based off of, mm -hmm. which can do photorealistic deep fake. Like I could just take a photo of out, out, anyone and I could be that person. <laughs> What do you think uh, of that? Have, you, have you have you figured out how to change voice no not yet that's my next step but that's already exists i know i, I know of uh hey, the Andy that's Warhol the coolest thing. question i could have ever come up with Chuck well Cruz. no okay we got, so so where we they're at it. now is they can like they reproduce andy warhol's voice mm -hmm. and i looked in how they did that it's not to it's a you have to train it it takes a little time to train mm -hmm. it 
And then they usually, to make the authentic, they use a real actor who also tries to mimic it. So it's a closer starting point, but the technology is already there. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? There's neural ne- networks being built to catalog mm-hmm. this. And I'm sure some component of it is open source. And you know about uh, OPT 175 or whatever Facebook's release. Mm-hmm. Facebook just released to the world their whole uh, language um, language deal, like for academic mm-hmm. research purposes. It's mm-hmm. called OPT 175B, I think. 175B. Okay. So like, here's me, dude. I'm having fun because like, I don't really know programming and coding. Like I'm not a trained coder, but I know mm-hmm. how to research. I know how to learn. I know how to teach myself and I know how to find information. And if I can find people who are smarter than me and start feeding, like, these are my ideas. These are the tools I'm, I want to integrate. I know it's not that hard. And, you know, who yes. can help me here? Create opportunities. Hey, I've seen you know? that, by the way, your market research skills are right through the ceiling. Uh, my second question is, uh, is your com- new computer powerful enough to run OBS? Can you record? Oh, yeah, I, 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 it's, I'm sure it is. I haven't even, I've installed it. I haven't really used it yet. Um, mm-hmm. I've been using StreamYard because I like the fact that I can uh, restream to three different locations and then have a copy on the cloud. And if I lose connection, it can still keep running if I have other viewers. There's a lot of, and I want to teach people how to do it because people nice. with lower resource demands because it's cloud-based. I realize you can get away with less hardware. So I want to use that as a skill, not only to leverage, but I want to teach people how to become streamers. I want to be content creating army leader, you know? And so OBS is my next thing um, mm-hmm. because there's a certain kind of time that takes into crafting the scenes and, you know, making yeah. the layouts and all that stuff and, and what you're doing with it to where I haven't even really messed with it too much. But I've been doing, I've been doing live streaming for over 10 years. Like I used to play with... Mm-hmm. What, what was that? What was Adobe's FMLE Flash Media Live Encoder? I used to play with uh, 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 Producer Pro, server. Ustream, Ustream days, Ustream. Before, okay. before YouTube was doing uh, streaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. That's great. And I got some really, I got some really interesting hardware connections because mm-hmm. my boss, where I used to work in the late 90s, early 2000, I left there, uh, was called R Computer. And we built the highest level of customized computers in the world. And I know that to be a fact because Teradyne, uh, we were the exclusive provider to Teradyne who mm-hmm. makes, is like the world's largest printed circuit board test equipment manufacturer. Mm-hmm. So anything that's on a green printed circuit board has likely been tested by a Teradyne system. They were called back then the Spectrum and the Z18XX. So this is pre auto jumpering days. This is like SCSI days. And we had to have such detailed specification to that hardware assembly, everything from detailed BIOS settings to revisions to like everything from what card, the memory chip, any kind of chip change, even in the model of the product where the manufacturer would replace a chip in it, yet they would still brand it under the same model. Like if that got biased, you know, it would fuck up their shit because it would change all the voltages and all this instrumentation and stuff. So I got really good and interested in hardware at a young age. I mean, I remember installing my first Hercules color graphic adapter, getting away from monochrome. My first computer was a VIC-20, you know, recorded on the cassette tape. I remember uh, when I added my first hard drive, 20 megabytes, you know, dial up on Prodigy, Bolton boards, you know, the whole nine yards all the way through the beginnings of the internet. So I, I as a kid, you know, I've been around it to self-taught, you know, I never really went to school for any of this shit. I learned on the fly in the job. And, and in fact, the people that I train or excuse me, I work, I got a sales job at $8 an hour in 1997 at this computer store within less than a year's time. I was the manager of the production department. I had a crew of like five people. Everyone there was older than me, worked there longer than me. I've never even built a computer yet. Now I'm managing the team of people that builds all these custom PCs. I was like, my boss is crazy to put me in this situation. What I realized was that the technical skill set and aptitude was not important to him. He knew I would develop it over time, but what was important was my character that I would, mm. I would, you know, I, I was straightforward. I would, you know, finish to completion. I cared about things and I was loyal, you know. And when I got over there, it was like romper room. It was like kids screaming and yelling at each other and stuff. Hey, Marco. Hey. Welcome. Um, 
we have uh well in a minute there will be the presentation part of the practical meeting oh, and yeah, i would yeah. like to join it because i have a new person i have a new guy uh who's my uh, student cool and he's he's joining so i want to support him and be uh, you know in the in, in the show if you oh, don't mind. Yeah, man. okay okay so oh, yeah. see you see you over there all right yeah. see ya doug i love your avatar it's amazing and uh, <laughs> you are on the way to stream and do content and i think that suits you a lot that's awesome and, and just last thing i, I want to brag about something i also bought yeah, for yeah. myself what is show that me. we can't see uh, it your background. yeah i, I gotta get a picture on this background uh, digga, 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 digga. yes what is that it's a stream deck Ooh, cool yeah these are L led buttons you can press them and you can program this whole thing right to do yeah. things on your pc so i can start streaming stop streaming start recording mute right blah 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 right and, you, and it's led and i can program even to show you know current ticker. oh my gosh <laughs> because... i love it <laughs> Is I that USB or what interface is it? it? It is USB. Yeah, it's 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 actually a computer. It's it's a computer with LED screens that every screen is a button and you can program it completely. Wow, that's so fucking it's beautiful. Streamed it. Yeah, it's. it's I'm gonna have to check it. It's three hundred bucks. It's almost like a like like a like a computer, like a uh, like a tablet. <laughs> but but this this is a, that's 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 the thing for my first salary I got. I spend the whole thing. <laughs> I love it for these toys like this. Mike. I love it. I hear you, you guys. Like, see, like, see you over there. In fact, see ya. Yeah, see ya. Hey, uh, Marco. So, uh, what time now? Oh, it's starting. Okay. Um, hey, uh, uh, during this next 30 minutes, my goal is to go to your do Google Doc, move into those question and answers and have that for you uh, for 11, basically. Um, and also write my list of weekly while they're doing all those introductions, basically. That's my plan. Uh, well, it's just a test to see if there's interest in there. Um, you know, I had one reply, uh, basically, what's on the mind so it's not getting through to the ENF uh, or just to exercise, uh, you know, people's, uh, voices really really quickly uh from the chats and then uh be able to spread it out on the same channels that uh eos nation and everybody else reaches in twitter and stuff like that uh but you know even five minutes if uh, i think it's possible it's out there the statement's prepared and two lines if it's on a twitter thing well, done. yeah what, what's the relevance of five minutes in that case i, I didn't catch that well i prepared a a statement, my concern, right, or a concern uh, about the EOS price. Um, I tweeted it out, and I can share it in Telegram. Uh, anyone else who has a concern uh, would prepare the statement. So you would go, you would read the statement, the statement of others, the ones that were submitted, and you would come in to vote. But we would vote face to face, like practically. Um, and the winning vote, uh, or the one that you would not vote on your own, on your own. Uh, uh, statement, your own concern. So that eliminates um, that competition. Um, if there's more than one round, I say it takes 10 minutes, but the first vote you're already prepared for, you've already decided before you entered the meeting. So the only thing you're doing is submitting that vote. Then the person who presented that uh, would expand upon it. And that's what the five minutes really would be. So people would, in five minutes, you get a voice and we just decide who has a voice before the meeting essentially is we don't say anything, we just um, say this is the one. And, you know, usually one will catch or whatever. Um, but you've already prepared your statement for people to get, and then you get five minutes to expand upon it if uh, it wins. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I, 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 caught, uh, I caught the answer to my question in, in that, um, ultimately, that there's some dynamics there, that, that, there's, that, that there's some structure there uh, for how you've thought this, uh, uh, this may be an interesting uh, functional like consensus or dialogue system or something. Uh, well, here's my take. I want to basically, um, I want to support it. In other words, I want to interact with it. So, so, so basically, in the next half hour, I'm going to get you that kind of a feedback thing. And I want 
this to grow. That, that's my two cents. So, well, the, the thing I said is there an interest in it, and that's all I wanted to throw out there because I want the community to um, to voice its opinion. Uh, Good. But sure, um, I'm willing to promote it. I wasn't just uh, I was just throwing it out there for anybody. You know, people complain on chat, essentially that. Uh, but if nobody wants to reply to it, then I simplified it this week, I thought. So I'm thinking simplify it enough so people will respond to it. Neat. Uh, so I'm not pushing it. But if you want to run with yeah, it. Yeah, the non-pushy non uh, planting a seed kind of thing is interesting to me because, yeah, my, my goal is to have these things uh, without any mass. You know, they just kind of everything just continues to uh, to kind of uh, self-support. Uh, it so already exists, though. <laughs> I'm just I'm just mining it. Just mining it out of chat, you know. Yeah. And and the cool thing is, if you're a if you're a, a troll, you're not going to want to submit it <laughs> because you know, you, you're going to have to put your face to it. Oh yeah. You know. And also, we have a bit of a trust network that seems to be emerging, or at least familiarity identity network. Like to go in with your troll comment. You know, an identity, familiarity, trust network kind of is emerging from Eden. You know, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, and I and I don't, think, otherwise. I don't think we said it earlier. I don't think the species has any idea how valuable trust is. I don't think we've ever really seen trust. Um, it, trust mean, is something that can be debated. Reputation uh, sometimes may be better used in certain things when speaking to people outside of crypto, uh, especially since we thought about trustless networks. So we call it respect, which is an awesome token. Yeah. Uh, but if we talk about reputation, then suddenly all the people that are in LinkedIn and stuff like that begin to uh, get the idea. Okay, and then the word I've been using over and over and over is accountability jumps in, but yeah. this is stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, basically I keep uh, saying we're, we're building a machine that accommodates for remuneration, accountability, reputation, trust, or whatever. Those are almost all three. Oh, accountability. Yeah. yeah, but but we, we, we are in violent agreement and able to reflect that from it back and forth because uh, we're on the same page there and it's nice to hear it and express it and, and, and hear it, you know, because um, this is like a six-pronged or more approach to uh, taking all these like, like solution tools for all those problems, bringing them all kind of together and if nothing else, uh, pre-alpha exploration of like this new, uh, uh, you know, kind of human coordination ability that we're, we're, we're moving into technologically. Everybody has, uh, everybody sees themselves as a social media star and here comes Twitter coming out of Twitter spaces. And now suddenly you're restricted from commenting. <laughs> okay, so you, yes, there's a live audience and all that stuff, but you come on Twitter and you're commenting, you're clicking, you're trolling, you're, emoting and your uh, gifing and all that stuff. And you go into Twitter spaces and you're locked out <laughs> from that. And that was the whole lure of it. I don't, I don't, you, you probably want to go to the fractal thing uh, and stuff. But that's, I like it. That's I like it. Yeah, I do. I want to do both. Uh, right now it's uh, 1030. So it's probably a good idea uh, moving in that direction. And do you also, are you going to go into the pre or are you going to take I'm a gonna break? Listen. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to listen and do some more of the newsletter and then I get it out. But if, if you start talking about it or I hear something, I'll jump in or just text me if you want me to go live and, or show my face. I will. In what regard? I don't understand. I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it listening, um, but I'm going to be working. So I'll probably have my screen off until yeah. we jump in, unless you're going to mention something that you want me to be in on. And then I'll just go to video. Well, I'm going to end this meeting and then it's all fractally and I don't plan on reaching out or connecting to any of us. It's just a fractally thing uh, where everybody gets in and says, this is what we've done the week, blah, 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 and then move on. Uh, yeah, the goal is to uh, leverage the fractally uh, platform to, to fund the foundation, say in about a year, we'll actually have some kind of like strange uh, income stream based on all this work we're doing. And I'm like, I mean, all this leg work of standing things up and moving patterns, you know, your, your survey machine is a perfect example of just stuff that we're doing. <laughs> and well, if you could, if you could manage to cross bar cultural barriers, translation barriers inside a fractally meeting, <laughs> that's a, that's a huge thing. Like whether it be trans, some sort of translation thing or some sort of uh, app or whatever, but if you're able to say, bring 
uh, China fractally and, uh, and English fractally together. That's the goal. Uh, a year and a half ago, I thought of EOS translation portal in that kind of a way where we would have like real time, we'd take care of real time streaming. Like, like the, to, I reached out to the Korean community through a uh, asynchronous approach and they said, wow, we really hear your voice. We really hear you through your, your, your message. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. So here it is a year and a half later, we've got the EOSB is about to be able to fund Translate Me, who has, you saw that meeting this week. They did it asynchronously. After the video is done, they stripped the, the stuff. But we were going to move into, while the video is happening, they're stripping and real-time de-recoding de according to standards that people like Doug are like already thinking about. Like they're like, it needs to be NPP01 standards of so-and-so. He, we actually have a standardization. We call it search engine optimization, but it's a standardization subset of the foundation just to give Doug that space to go, I want standards for search engine optimization. Well, that actually floats into stripping voice to text and archiving in, and, and that's going to go into real time stripping and Communic then the real bandwidth comes when we can do what you, you just nailed it. You went right to it to say, look, man, the Holy Grail is kind of like a real time video voice to text machine to where the borders of language are just kind of weirdly crumbling. And in real time, Gracie Lou can say, Mark, it's as if I hear and feel your voice on this Zoom call. Thank you. And I go, this is amazing. So that's the goal. Thanks, Marco. Doug, Oscar, Chuck Cruz, we have not spoken about that, but you and I have. So, so that I is- won't, I won't mention it. I know- um, I, I want to say this. I want to say this. I want it to be cross-mentioned. I want it to grow. I'm the only one that knows it. Now you and me both know it. So, so in other words, this is a goal we have not made- popular but we all kind of think about it in our back of our head but 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 the more we we open this up the more we realize the the scope of what we're trying to do is going to be like what you nailed it uh, we want full streaming high bandwidth infra real high, super highways of cross-cultural flow for the first time ever it's just going to be rich so if if we can do it i'll let you go yeah, man. <laughs>